Hello friends, welcome back to our channel. As promised, I am going to present an example 2 where I will illustrate why should not we use blocking statements inside the sequential blocks while doing very log coding. And in this example 2, I am going to include multiple statements inside a single always block. But before proceeding further, I would like to request all the viewers who have not seen video on example 1, please go through it, then this video will become very interesting for you. Now without wasting much time, let us get started. Friends, just for your information, as per Verilog design guidelines, while modeling sequential logic, one must use non-blocking assignments. For an example, I have presented a very long code for D flip-flop where I am using non-blocking assignments. But again the question arises, what happens if I start using blocking assignments inside the sequential blocks? That is what we are going to see in this video. Friends, just as a quick review, in my previous video, on example 1, we have considered these two codes just to illustrate the harm effects of using blocking assignments inside the sequential blocks. And the specialty in these two codes is, all the always blocks consists of a single assignment statement only, whether it is blocking or non-blocking. And we observe that, if there is only single assignment statement inside the always block, logic synthesizer is generating the correct code whether we use blocking or non-blocking assignment statement. It does not matter for logic synthesizer. And we also observe that the simulation results are coming wrong when we are using blocking assignment statements inside the always block because there exists a race condition. And even we observe that if we change the order of these statements, our simulation results are varying, which is again unexpected and wrong behavior. Because as per Verilog design guidelines, these three always blocks are going to work in parallel and their position in the .v file should not matter. And I also mentioned that if we use multiple statements inside a single always block, that will definitely trigger a condition where our results will be wrong in logical synthesis. And that is what I am going to show you in the next part of the video. Friends, this part is the crux of our video. Please give a bit more attention. And I have considered these two codes just to illustrate why should not we use blocking assignment statements inside the sequential blocks. Friends, as we know that this is correct coding style where we use non-blocking assignment statements. And the intention of this code is to infer three flip-flops. Input of first flip-flop will be D in and output will be A. And this A input will go as an input to the second flip-flop and output of second flip-flop will be B. And this B will go as an input to the third flip-flop and output of third flip-flop will be C. And even if we place these three statements in any order, the synthesis results will be same. Now I am going to show you the synthesis results for this very log code where we are utilizing non-blocking assignment statements. Friends, I am going to use Vivado for logical synthesis results and I have pasted our code here. Now I am going to run synthesis. Run synthesis. Now I am going to see the output for this very log code. Press schematic. Friends, as we discussed, it is generating the expected logical circuit diagram. DIN is the input of first flip-flop. And output of first flip-flop is variable A, which is going as an input to second flip-flop. And output of second flip-flop is variable B. And variable B is going as an input to the third flip-flop and output of which is variable C. Now let us take our attention to this part of coding where we are using blocking assignment statements. And let us try to see what will be the results after synthesis. Friends, I have changed the code here. Now let us try to see the output of logical synthesizer. Go here, press schematic. Friends, it is only inferring a single flip-flop. You see D in is the input of this flip-flop and A, B, C are the output of the same flip-flop. 
Friends, why it generated only single flip-flop? Let me try to explain. So when the logical synthesizer will reach at this first statement, a is equal to d in, it will infer one flip-flop, where d in will be the input, a will be the output. As this statement is a blocking statement, it is going to block the execution of these two statements. So once the value of a is calculated, then only logical synthesizer will move to the second statement. Now new value of a is equal to b and it does not require any extra logic because b is equal to new value of a. Similarly, c is equal to b. It also does not require any extra logic. So that is why at the output of the flip-flop, all the three nodes are placed. Friends, now I'm going to change the order of these three statements. When I say order, that means I'm going to change the position of these three statements inside the dot v file. And I will show you that logical synthesis results are varying, which is again an unexpected behavior. In the first go, I'm taking this second statement at the first position. And now let us try to see the logical synthesis results. Go to here, press schematic. Friends, just see it has inferred two flip-flops. D in is the input of first flip-flop and output of which is variable A, which is going as an input to the second flip-flop and output of which is variable B and C. Friends, let me try to explain you why it is inferring two flip-flops. So when the logical synthesizer reaches at first statement, it sees that B is equal to A. So it will definitely infer a flip-flop, this one where A will be the input and B will be the output. Then it reaches at the second statement and it sees that A is equal to D in. So it will definitely infer second flip-flop where D will be the input of the flip-flop and A will be the output. Now when it reaches at the third statement where we say C is equal to B, B is already calculated. So it will place both the variables C and B at the output of the second flip-flop. Friends, now I'm going to order these statements in such a way that I will yield the same results as we got with non-blocking assignment statements. Let us see. Now I'm taking this third statement at the first position. And now let us try to see the output of a synthesizer. Friends, see it is generating the same result that we got with non-blocking assignment statements. D in is the input of first flip-flop and output of which is variable A, which is going as an input of the second flip-flop, and output of which is variable B, which is acting as an input to third flip-flop, and output of third flip-flop is variable C. Friends, now let me try to explain you that how it generated the correct results. So when the logical synthesizer reaches at the first statement, C is equal to B, it will infer this flip-flop, where output will be variable C, and input will be variable b. Now it reaches to the second statement, b is equal to a. Then it infer the second flip-flop, output of which will be variable b, and input will be variable a. Now when it reaches the third statement, a is equal to d in, it will infer this third flip-flop, where d in will be the input, and a will be the output. Friends, as we observed so far that, when we are using non-blocking assignment statements, we need not to take care the order of the statements within the always block. They are all going to execute in parallel. But when we are using blocking assignment statements, to get the desired results, we need to take care the ordering of the statements. But let me tell you, as per my practical experience, when the code reaches thousand and thousand lines, it is very difficult to maintain this ordering and there is huge possibility of errors. Hence, it is always recommended to use non-blocking assignment statements within the sequential blocks. Friends, now I have a question for you and the question of the day is, you have to generate the output of logical synthesizer for this very log code. Here I have used mixed blocking and non-blocking assignment statements. Please write your answer in the comment section and I will reply there. And with this, I'm going to wrap up this video and I hope that this would be quite informative for all of you. And in future, we are going to make many such videos which will definitely help you to boost your confidence level. And to be aligned with our channel, please subscribe it 
and to get the notification of all the videos as early as possible. Don't forget to press bell icon. Thank you so much for watching.